I think what upset Jockey more than anything, he missed double 18 for a nine dart, which would have been the first televised um, nine dart on TV. He missed it right on the wire of double, eight, double 18 and went out in 10 darts. But he lost that set because he kept shaking his head. And before he knew it, I was three sets to one up and he, I didn't think he was going to catch me. Was there a point where you were starting to get nervous, though? Because although you were confident, you're suddenly knocking the big names out and you must have been wondering, am I going to keep this going? No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't really nervous because I knew I'd already qualified for the next year. I knew that I'd beaten one of the best players in the world, John Lowe. I'm now playing jockey. I'm free one up, so I'm not going to disgrace myself. And I just knew that jockey was under a lot of pressure to try and stop because the whole country was starting to get behind me. And it was one by one they were trying to stop me. They didn't want this young kid coming through because I was going to upset the, the little establishment of the three great players. And you've got, so, no, you got no fear when it's your first time as no. well. And I think that, uh, his, his big game was the last 16 game. Once he won the last 16 yeah. game, he knew he was back there next year no matter what happened. And that's a lot of pressure off. You know what I mean? He hasn't got to go through the qualifiers. He's won two games on TV. He can just go up there and enjoy it. And that's what he did. You know, you look, watch some of these players now. They introduce them. They, they, they walk up like they're frightened to go on the stage. Yeah. He, couldn't, he couldn't wait to get up there. Oh. Did yeah, you, he, he played two games game? in one night. Did you see that game? <laughs> I watched it all, I watched it all, didn't I? What yeah. were you thinking? I, I was hoping he'd win. I thought I'd rip his head off, you know what I mean? <laughs> I wanted him to win, you know, because I'd rather play him than, like, when he knocked John out, I thought, that's Andy. When he knocked Jockey out, I thought, that's brilliant. You know, I thought he won't you, you know, hear it at the wall. That's what you're hoping, isn't you? Yeah. But I've seen some players do it now until once they win for a couple of rounds, then they realise what they're doing. Then it, and they just, the bottle just goes. But he didn't, he was enjoying it. And that, that was, I thought, here we go. But after the first couple of sets, I thought, I'm in a bit of trouble here. I've got to, I've got to play well to beat him. And in the commentary box, are you surprised at what you're seeing in, the, in that section of the tournament? I think you never do with the World Championship. You never ever took it. <coughs> you never... You, I think what you do is you don't expect darts even by then, my 83, to live up to any script. Because there's too many things going on. Jockey's been locked in rooms by his management team, so he won't go drinking with the lads. Sticking Chinese through the door and saying, "Don't let him out." So put a dartboard up in his bedroom in the hotel. And you know that Eric be a bit worried about the early rounds, but I think that that relaxation with Keith came through, that he was looking forward to the fact that he qualified for the next year. I would agree with that. Well, yeah, two players. I, I used to love getting up there. You know, I mean, I had no fear of getting up there. And it was, yeah, two players, two, two young players getting up there who wanted to play darts. I mean, so it's <coughs> it was great for TV, great for the crowd. It was it was good. I mean, if I'd have went up there and won five nil, uh, it would have been boring. You know, we've had a few of them finals over the years with other players and that. But when you get a close game, especially the underdog win. So it's, great, it's great for the game. I mean, it's, it didn't for me. I could have killed him. Yeah. I got to shake his hand, and I'm, I've got to wait a year before I can hopefully put things right. But I mean, it's great for TV when the underdog wins. So let's paint the scene before the final. You're pleased that you got the. I'm over kid. the moon. You're over the moon. Over the moon. You're really pleased. You've got there, and you're, you're facing Eric Bristow. Now you've been confident about John Lowe and Jockey Wilson. But you know that Bristol's going to be in the final. So what is your mental process now? I really was confident because, you know, and it's, it was proof if you look at the tape now, Terry O'Day was in the studio and he said, how do you feel? I said, I'll beat Eric 6-3 today. I said, it won't be any more than that. And that's just the way I was. I've, maybe because I had to say that to myself, because if I thought, God, I'm playing the greatest player here, then it could be a bad thing. It's a negative. I just thought... I beat two, I beat number three, I beat number two, so why not number one? And that was just the way I took the old tournament. You know, people said to me, you've got nothing to lose, and I said, I have, I've got a world final. And as it happens, it was the only world final I ever made. So, you know, when people start saying, it doesn't matter now, you've done everything, you're now playing the best player. You know, I, I'm just so confident that I've... I mean, we finishing, that was the main thing, I think um, Eric would agree there, that... I took a lot of big finishes out over the week. So Especially I knew, one of them. One of them yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that one later because so, the I mean, Della checkout is, is part of the sport now. But the day began how for you? Um, I think I was up about 7 o'clock. I had breakfast or a piece of toast.